on pragmatics and science and engineering to solve certain problems and some, the problem of getting the word out there and trying to hit some form of critical mass is one where I, I'm making a lot of presumptions. I don't know. I'm trying to see what the thoughts are about this. Um, so you don't, you're, it's almost like you're not applying the same pragmatics to elements of the movement. It's almost like you're not applying the same form of pragmatics and realism to the social issues, the issues of evaluation and culture that they are to things like technology. Well, that's, that that's, is going to be our biggest hurdle, is, is overcoming these, these outdated ancient value systems that we currently depend on today in the world right now is being run on you know, 5,000 year old uh, value systems. It, it's it, the, the entire socio, uh, I'm losing word, my words here, but the entire system is run on a polit political monetary based uh, value system. And these you know, I think it was, I'm not sure if it was one of you guys pointed out that the, you know, the monetary system, the, the, the system of, uh, of using a, a medium of exchange vis-a-vis um, -vis gold, silver, or fiat, you know, the current fiat currency system that we, that we live in today, uh, that concept was developed, what, some 5,000 years, maybe 10,000 years ago, ever since we started growing food out of the ground. Um, our political system that we operate on is, is very loosely based on the, the Greek uh, system of you know, a couple thousand years ago. Um, you gotta, it, it kind of begs the question, can you merge these you know, several thousands of year old systems with the current you know, technologically based uh, paradigm that we live in now and be able to successfully do it without having all kinds of, you know, all kinds of flashes, all kinds of problems. I mean, you're, you're coming out of a, you, these systems were designed in a, in a time of scarcity when people didn't have the capability to travel around the planet. They didn't even know the, the earth was round back then when these systems were developed. And why are we still using them? Why haven't we updated those two specific systems along with our, our science, our, our, you know, a, as we arrived at different conclusions about, about um, the world and nature and, and the universe around us, why haven't we evolved our value systems with it? And a lot of it, you know, I, I think a lot of it is because there, there is a small group of people that do benefit off of those ancient value systems, though, obviously. Um, but as time moves forward, more and more people are not benefiting. Um, I, I can. I think I'd also like to add um, that um, when, as we kind of look at our development uh, historically, especially like when uh, we go back to the you know, what was level one, which is basically the uh, the most primitive, the most primitive human that was basically only capable of sustaining a very, very, very small group of individuals, um, possibly just a family. So um, what's going to happen um, with, uh, and I'm very optimistic about this, provided that some of the other, uh, you know, uh, more uh, natural collapses um, don't take place, at least as fast as, uh, you know, at least as fast as they seem to be taking place. And it's the fact that uh, before, in, in Neolithic times, you were basically only going to be empathic to the people that were immediately around you, maybe the five individuals that, like, that you lived. So those people that potentially lived on the other side of the hill, who you barely could see, you were going to be probably very, very hostile to them. And so you wouldn't be very, very empathic to them. But as you eventually move into an agrarian society where you're now able to sustain larger groups of people, you find that that empathic circle, um, that, that, you know, that willingness to work with other humans expands. Well, then we go into the industrial area where now you can sustain um, entire cities and, and very, very large communities. And, the idea of you know your family, you know the the, 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 you know, the empathic who you're going to feel empathy towards, almost like a, your family essentially, basically gets larger and larger with each progression of technology. So um, that's also kind of why you know you know Christians might feel uh, you know empathic or a sense of bonding with other Christians because they you know they it's the, it goes back to this very uh, this very primitive uh, urge to belong 
um, and and, uh, and to and, you know and to want to to want to be a part of a part of a group. And it's the same case for every every religious group. They just kind of see them. that basically appeals to their uh, you know the, the, to to the sense of belonging and family that is inherent in every human being. Um, so now, as we move into the technology age, we have a tool that is that has been completely absent for for every every stage of development, and that's that's pretty much the internet. Um, because when you know, with now the internet, um, the old structures that we, you know, that even that we are brought up to hold very, uh, very dear, like, you know, representative government. Well, representative government was great when nobody really had really good communication with the next town over, with the next group of people. Um, the the founders created, uh, you know, they were inspired by the idea of representative government because most of the people that were work that spent the majority of their lives working on a farm, growing their food. It was very, very impractical for the average person to get down to the Capitol, see what all the hoopla was going on, be able to vote on those bills. That's why you got a representative. We don't live in that age anymore. We That's get that information just like that. <laughs> um, so, so when we, so it's it's kind of like now we're, we're we're connected by social media, Twitter, or Facebook, and then uh, you get like you literally get hundreds of people like that could potentially, you know. Uh, demonstrate their empathy, you know, on on your status update. That is, that that is a phenomenon that has never <laughs> occurred in the history of humankind. Um, and so I think that that as uh, technology continues to improve and we can connect more people to other people, essentially that that uh, that that empathy uh, for you know who is your family is will eventually grow to the to the entire globe. But um, there's still the, the the poorest people on the planet. Um, they're basically still living um, in pre-industrial conditions. Like if you go to the rural, the most remote parts of like Pakistan, for example, they they didn't, they don't um, you know most of them didn't even know that uh, that that that, that, uh, that there's a war going on. Like you know with you know in Afghanistan, and so so it's uh, it's until we can actually bring up every sing single segment of the human population that I think we're going to start to see the. Uh, people are going to start to wake up and to their old values and, and why those old values didn't, didn't work. It's just that they're actually going to have the exposure that they never had before.